What's up guys? This video is going to be about my three year journey and the story I have from being homeless to living in a car for four months, five months and then being where I am today. So I'm Oliver, if you don't know, um, I uh, live and work in Surrey and I am 25 years of age. I grew up in Lincolnshire in a place called Holbeach. It's dead, fields, nothing there, no opportunity, basically nothing. A great place to, to go and retire, uh, quiet, clean, full of countryside, but there's literally nothing there. I left school and I was a plumber. I had an apprenticeship um, and I was a plumber for three years until I got sacked. I ended up working in a food factory to support my, my life and I hated every single fucking day of it. And I was there for a year, I was doing 12 hour shifts, from six in the morning to six at night. I used to go into work when it was dark and I used to come out of work when it was dark. I never fucking saw daylight for a year, apart from a few summer months, but that's it. It's fucking so shit. Kind of bummed out with uh, the whole job. I used to go along uh, with my mum while she got tattooed and I just remember thinking this is such a fucking sick job. It's such a cool job. Um, I wonder how to get into it and I asked him for like advice to how to get into it and he you know just didn't really give me any answers so um, I just thought you know fuck like I'll message a few people I'll message like all the local studios and see if they have any clue if they could give me an apprenticeship or like a trial I didn't really know how it worked I met um, my friend who'd put me in touch with this tattooist who I started to work for in order shop. I moved my stuff down to Hertfordshire to live with my aunt to make the commute to the studio easier for me because I was traveling two, three hours to go and work for free um, to learn how to be a tattooist at the studio. I was there for about three or four months. Uh, I got a job delivering with Domino's. Uh, which didn't last very long because I didn't stay around there very long because the owner of the studio decided to get rid of me and took my stuff along with it and I ended up getting all my stuff stolen by the owner of that studio. I'm not gonna name any names. It's sort of kept close to me anyway because I think you have experiences and you, you learn from them. I then went back to my mum's um, and stayed on her sofa because um, while I was away, uh, I was living with my nan before, uh, who lived around the corner from my mum, and she'd sold the house while I was gone, and I had nowhere to basically go. So after I started living with my mum on the sofa, and I was working at this food factory, I had to pay my aunt back, who'd lent me the money to get all my tattoo stuff. I think she lent me like a grand or something, um, and I was, pro I think I was about 21 at the time, and I worked in this food factory for a year. It wasn't you know, the greatest thing, but I had one goal in my head and I was like, I need to pay my aunt back, I need to buy all my stuff again, and I'm gonna try and convince my mum to convert her like out conservatory bit, because um, it had its own door and stuff and was kind of separate from the house, um, into a tattoo studio. I brought this up with my mum and she was like, you know what, cool, that's fine. I got the studio operating in August and then I started tattooing myself, my brother-in-law Simon, and I worked for about four or five months for free until I was ready to sort of get the confidence to, to actually uh, start charging people. After this, um, Christmas came around. My mum bought me a 1500 pound car because uh, I had to sell my car, I had literally had to sell everything because of what previously happened. I got a, a job op uh, opportunity in Woking in Surrey and I was like amazing. Um, one of the, the artists, Emma, she uh, basically put my work in front of um, the owners of the studio and they were and they were looking for an artist and I fit the bill and uh, I think I sort of, I, I took to it quite quickly I managed to um, 
sort of my work progressed quite quick in the five months I was doing it. And um, it still wasn't every day though, you know, I was still working two, three, three days a week, which was just getting me by, you know. I paid my aunt off eventually and then I got all my stuff again. So, you know, so I, I sort of saw a light at the end of the tunnel and I, I went for the job in Woking. I started to work there, I learned so much from the artists there and I felt like after, th I think I was there for about three or four months and I felt like, because I'm such a hungry person, I, I'm very self-critical, uh, I sort of plateaued and I wasn't happy with it. So um, I felt like I needed to, to learn more. So I had an opportunity where my friend Che put my work in front of uh, a guy in Denmark and he owned a few studios around the world. He was like, yeah bro, come along, blah, blah, blah. He, he uh, flew me out to Denmark and I wanted to learn and I went purely to learn, you know, to benefit myself and for the studio you're working in, whether it be your own or um, or someone else's, you know, if your work gets better then it's a reflection on you and the studio you work in, so it brings business both ways. The owner at the time in Woking didn't see that um, and felt, I think, betrayed a bit because it's, it is a very self what's the word, it is a very self-thinking, uh, selfish industry in regards to if you want to get better, you need to you need to fly, fly the, the coop, you know, you need to fly off and do your own thing. Um, but it, it was, I was only gone for like a week and um, I got back and all my clients were cancelled and it kind of threw me un, under the bus and I was in the shit. Uh, at this time, after he cancelled my clients, I had no money coming in. I was I was forced to come out of the place I was renting um, and I lived in my car and I didn't want to go back home because I felt like if I go back home it's me giving up it's me just thinking fuck it like let's just go home it's easy to go home I, I was like no I'm not I'm gonna you know try and find work around here I'm gonna live in my car and that way you know I don't really have to pay for anything um, I had, I think I had like 200 pounds to my name, not, probably not even that, and I lived in my car for about four months, and this opportunity came on Facebook. I saw it on Facebook. Um, I was in debt by this point because I couldn't pay anything. Um, the only thing that, that was paid for was the car that I was living in, which my mum paid for. Um, the year before, six months, seven months before. And I saw an ad on Facebook uh, by Glenn, Glenn Carlos. I worked with him, I got the job, I went for an interview with him, I got the job and he was sort of starting up his new studio and um, it kind of worked, it worked. And I started working there and I, time flew, I, I turned into such, a better artist. I learned so much from, from Glenn. He really taught me how to do things a more of a structured way. And he taught me so much. And I'm so thankful for meeting him and just starting the journey that he started opening the studio with him. And I learned so much and he took time out, which no one has ever done before, and actually stood over me and said, you wanna do this with your hand, you wanna do that with your hand. Showed me what I needed to get, all my all my equipment that I was using was old, it was um, not right, it was sort of put together, and I basically got a credit card out. I'm fucking so shocked that I, I, I got accepted for one. I got a credit card of 800 pound, um, and I maxed it out and bought all my stuff back. Um, and then that's when I start start to progress, and that's when I I started to notice that being a tattooist, if you don't use the best stuff or high standard quality stuff, your work will suffer, and it won't become it won't be as 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 good as you want it to be. It won't become as smooth as you want it to be. So, so that I was tattooing now for about a year and a half um, by this point, and January last no Dece no November last year he told me to he, he basically told everyone to get out of the studio because um, of personal reasons and uh, we all had to leave. One of my last clients in that studio, I again was like, fuck, like why can't I just have a break, you know? Uh, I've been fucked over so many times and even though it was personal, I was like, I was worried when Glenn said, 
for everyone to get out. Everyone had, you know, family around the area, and I basically just got in um, to a flat, and I was like, "Fuck!" Like, I need to work somewhere now. I, I've got, I've got 30 days to find somewhere to work. I had a few offers, which was really reassuring for me. From Guildford to Sunbury to Richmond, and I just, knew, uh, but I knew every every place that I went to, to view and see, I knew I wasn't going to be happy. And I, and something told me to just wait, wait, and wait. And something told me that something was going to come along. And one of my my last clients in them 30 days of working in um, Glen Studio was Jason. He said, "What's going on? I've seen uh, I've seen you put a post up saying that you're leaving. Like fucking hell, what's up? You know, it doesn't make sense." And I basically told him everything that that uh, was going on, and he was like, "Oh well, you know, come come by and uh, I'll have a word with my missus, and you can have a look at uh, a little space I've got." And I was like, "All right, sweet." And I wasn't really expecting much. I was just expecting like maybe like a little outhouse thing. I don't know, same thing as my mum's maybe. I went by to Jason's and I viewed the place, and I was like, "This is fucking perfect." And it was a really good size. It had a bathroom. Um, it was all sort of clean, tidy, like hygienic. So I was like, you know, let's sort out a price and let's sort out, um, let's sort out a date basically. And me and my girlfriend at, at the time broke up and um, had to find somewhere to live. So I put down a deposit on this place and here I am. I moved in December last year. Nearly been here a year now, and it's been really good. It's been amazing and. Uh, Claire now is I employ Claire to do my to do my social media and um, helping me with like bits and bobs, uh, replying to people. Uh, and I've just set up a website. Um, I had a previous website which wasn't that great. Um, it still worked. It, it was still conventional, but I felt like it wasn't as professional as the one I've got now. I've invested into my business. I do spend a lot on advertising marketing techniques and stuff to get my name out there because being from Lincolnshire and coming down to somewhere that no one knows you, you've got no friends, you've got no fucking family here, all my family are four hours away, three hours away, um, I've got no one to help me, I've got no one to sort of guide me apart from someone, you know, a call to my mum or like a call to someone or whatever, like no one knows my name. I think you have to, you have to really like push push into your um, into your uncomfortable element and if and like if there was a time where I was getting money coming through 300 pounds like say come in and I'd spend like I'd work out what I need for them a few days or for that week and put that aside for food uh, maybe for petrol while I was staying in my car or even you know a, a, a bit of rent money um, just so I, I've got something you know and um, I would then spend everything else I'd stick it back in the bank and just spend it on advertising and that's how I'm doing stuff now to be honest um, I'm saving a lot of money and I'm throwing a lot of money back into advertising and building the business that way and I think that really helps and I think that's um, something some, I think everyone that starts a small business has to do especially if, if you're not known because you've got competitors and the tattooing industry is a very competitive business. It makes me feel proud of how far I've come and, and looking back to when I was living in a car like washing in fucking McDonald's um, disabled toilets or Tesco's disabled toilets at three in the morning because it was the fucking only place I could get a wash, you know? Um, I look back on them days and I sort of, I pat myself on the back for putting up with it and not fucking breaking down to be honest and I think that comes from um, just raw attitude towards life. You know, everyone that's been involved in my journey over the last three years, I want to say thank you so much, and um, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep pushing and keeping things on the up um, for you guys, so it's not a waste. And here on out, I'm very, very, very grateful with um, all of you who are for my, my my clients, my past clients, my first ever clients, um, the people that have helped me, Glenn, Jules, uh, Jason, Claire, my mum, my dad, my aunt Anya. Um, and everyone else, uh, my mate Ralph for, for helping me with the deposit, 
for this place and um, I feel like you're only going to expect better from me and more to come from, from me and, and my journey and I'll do another video in another three years and we'll see where my life is then. If you're interested in sticking with me, um, follow my Instagram, follow my, subscribe to, to my YouTube. If you want a tattoo, message me on Facebook, um, Tattoos by Oliver Rare, or go see, uh, go and follow my Instagram account, you can DM me there, um, that's at Oliver Air. and yeah, I'll see you in the next video guys, so yeah, peace.